and waits for the result. He knows the result. You don't know the result. That's the reason he lets you undergo this life in this world. The next question from the ladies, please. My question is to Father. Uh, Dr. Zakir Naik uh, had mentioned that Christianity means uh, those people who uh, agree or accept the teachings of uh, Jesus Christ. So does that mean that people before Christ who did not get the teachings of uh, Jesus Christ were not Christians or Christianity is only pertaining to people after Christ? The terms uh, Christians uh, comes from Christ, then Christians, believers uh, in Christ. So they not only accept uh, the teachings of Jesus Christ, but they accept and believe the person of Jesus Christ, uh, who is God, who the Word made flesh and dwelt among us. So those who believe that Jesus Christ uh, is the divine person, a person in the Trinity and they become Christians. So the terms are used to recognize, distinguish between other religions only. The next question from the brother on the right, please. Assalamu alaikum. I am Azim Siddiq, third year BTEC, RC Caligat. My question is to Dr. Naik. So while explaining the concept of God in Islam, you had mentioned that God is unique. That is, you can't compare God to any human being or any human attributes. But in the same Quran, Allah says that Allah Musa taklima, that God spoke to Musa. So, so speech or talking to a person is a human act. So God subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, can he take a human act? So that was a question that I said in my talk that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unique and there are certain qualities of man which if you attribute to God Almighty he ceases to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he asked a question that Quran says and, and he rightly quoted that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Musa alayhi salam so if you tell me that God Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a mouth like the human beings and he has lips he has thigh to teeth and then he spoke moving his lips then he's not God Almighty Quran does not say that Speaking, Allah speaks in various ways. The speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be compared to the speech of human being. The moment you say God Almighty spoke with two lips, thigh to teeth and a tongue, then he is not God Almighty. There is nothing like him. Quran says he spoke. How he spoke, we don't know. Surely not like a human being. Hope that answers the question. The next question from the brother on the left. My question is to Dr. Zakir. Uh, Father Gio and Swami has given a secular view of religion. You have interpreted religion on the basis of Quran. And that Quran cannot go wrong. And it can go only wrong when someone has wrongly interpreted it. So I am bringing forward a contentious issue that is affecting the Muslims of today. Uh, that is the regarding the descent of hijab in the Surah Al-Azab which has led to the division of the Muslim space into two. So what we ultimately see here is that th th this is a public space. Here men sit here. That's a more private place. Women are confined to that place. So this is a very simple interpretation. If you elaborate it you can uh, find uh, more uh, bizarre dimension like in Afghanistan where Muslim women are completely confined from um, institutions. The brother has asked a question that I have interpreted religion according to the Quran. I gave the definition of religion according to Oxford Dictionary, not according to the Quran, according to Oxford Dictionary. And then I started my talk. But I believe that Islam is the only way of life. The brother asked me a question that how can you interpret the system of hijab which mentioned in the Quran? The brother didn't give the verse number, he was referring to Surah Noor, chapter 24, verse number 30, 31, which speaks about the hijab. Verse number 30 first speaks about the hijab for male, verse number 31 then speaks about the hijab for female. Surah Noor chapter 24 verse number 30 says, Say to the believing man that he should lower his gaze and guard his modesty. That means the moment he looks at any woman, he should lower his gaze 
and God is modesty. Anything comes breathed in, thought comes in his mind, you should lower his gaze. Same thing is mentioned in the Bible, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 27 to 29. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, It is said of the old time that thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever shall looketh upon a woman to lust after her has already committed adultery in his heart. Who said that? Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, it's mentioned in the Bible. That means if any person looks at a woman to lust after her, he's already committed adultery in his heart. Same thing the Quran is saying. Say to the believing man that he should lower his gaze and guard his modesty. The next verse of the Holy Quran, Surah Nur chapter 24 verse number 31, speaks about the hijab for the woman. It says, say to the believing woman that she should lower her gaze and guard her modesty. And to display not her beauty, except what appears ordinarily of. And to draw her veil over the bosom, except in front of a father, a son, a husband, and a big list of mahram, the close relatives which you can't marry is given. There are basically six criteria which are mentioned in the Quran and the Hadith for the hijab. The first criteria is the extent which differs between the man and the woman. For the man, it's from the navel to the knee. For the woman, the complete body should be covered. The only part that can be seen are the face and the hands up to the wrist. If they wish to cover this, they are most welcome. All the remaining five criteria are the same for man and woman. Second criteria is the clothes they wear should not be so tight that it reveals the figure. Third, it should not be transparent so that you can see through. Fourth, it should not be so glamorous that it attracts the opposite sex. Fifth, it should not resemble that of the unbeliever. That means you can't deceive the people. You can't wear a sign like for example Om or sign of cross. It's a sign of Hinduism and Christianity. You can't deceive the people by wearing the sign of an unbeliever. And the sixth criteria is, you should not wear clothes that which resemble the opposite sex. The same message given in the Bible, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 22, verse number 5. Bible says, the man will not wear clothes that which pertinent to a woman. Neither shall a woman wear clothes that which pertinent to a man. If you read the Old Testament, first book of Timothy, chapter number 2, verse number 9. It says that the woman should be dressed up with sobriety with modesty and shamefacedness. The women should be dressed up with modesty, with shamefacedness and sobriety. They should not have braided hair of gold, nor should they wear costly array, pearls, etc. And if you see the photograph of Mary, peace be upon her, she is dressed up exactly like the way the Muslim should be dressed up, because she was a Muslim. Her complete body is covered. The only part that you can see of Mother Mary, may Allah be pleased with her, is the face and the hands up to the wrist. This is the exact dress how women men should dress. The reason the brother asked, why should we be dressed up like that? The Quran gives the answer in Surah Azab, chapter 33, verse number 59. O oh Prophet, tell your wives and the believing women that they should wear the cloak when they go abroad so that they shall be recognized and it will prevent them from being molested. It will prevent them from being molested. Now let me ask you a question. That suppose two twin sisters who are equally beautiful, they are walking down the streets of Calicut. One is wearing the Islamic hijab, both of them are beautiful. One twin sister is wearing the Islamic hijab, completely covered, the only part that is seen is the face and the hands up to the wrist. The second twin sister is equally beautiful, she is wearing the western clothes, the skirts and the mini. Both are walking down the street and round the corner there is a hooligan waiting for a catch. I am asking the question, which girl will it tease? Will it tease the girl wearing a skirt or a mini or will it tease the girl wearing the Islamic hijab? Which one will it is? Which one? Which one? Yes, wearing the skirt and the mini. You expose and you invite trouble. Therefore, Quran rightly says that hijab has been proclaimed for the woman to protect the modesty. To protect the modesty. If you know, today on average, every day more than 1,900 cases of rape are taking place in America. More than 1,900 every day. Supposed to be one of the most advanced country of the world. I am asking the question if you implement the Sharia there, that any man looks at a woman with a brazen thought, with an unashamed gaze, he should lower his gaze. And all the women should be modestly dressed up, wearing the hijab, complete body covered. The only part that can be seen is the face and the hands up to the wrist, like what's mentioned, like what you see Mother Mary wearing. May Allah be pleased with her. And suppose if after that someone commits rape, Islamic Sharia says capital punishment, death penalty. I am asking the question, if you implement the Sharia in America, will the rate of rape, will it increase? Will it remain the same or will it decrease? 
it will decrease. It's a practical law. You implement the Sharia and you get results. That's the reason the least rate of rape in any country in the world.